An easy way to boost colors in lab mode is by utilizing a vibrance adjustment. If we increase the saturation all the way to the max, we get this really strong colors. An alternative method is to apply a curves adjustment and modify the curve into an S-curve. When we now change the blend mode to color, we get a very similar effect. Pretty awesome! I will add a mask to both of them so we can compare them next to each other. As mentioned, they are pretty similar, maybe even exactly the same, depending on how the S-curve has been set up. Let's cycle through a couple of other example images and see how well they work. Even though these two adjustments work pretty well, let me introduce you to another method, which will definitely blow your mind. I'm going to add a procedural texture filter and apply a formula to the luminance channel. The formula will be in the description. We're going to change the luminance by taking half of the existing luminance value and add on top of that the average values of the color channels. This will create a pretty bright image. I will extend the formula with an A parameter. With the A parameter, we can control the effect, but for now, let's set it to the value of 0.5. If we now put this procedural texture to multiply, have a look at that. Pretty awesome. The end result is very similar as the curves adjustment in color blend mode. I have prepared a comparison group, so let's disable this adjustment and enable the group. On the left we have the curves adjustment and on the right we have the procedural texture. Well, the procedural texture version has more contrast and looks much better in my opinion. But let me open up the procedural texture layer and increase the A parameter to the max value. Interesting, the results are exactly the same. Pretty amazing. By the way, I have added a link to the macros in the description, especially useful for the iPad users who cannot edit procedural texture layer formulas. We can also lower the value of the A parameter below 0.5, which will darken the image quite a bit. But this gives us the possibility to experiment with different blend modes, like screen, which brightens the image with bright colors, or have a more dramatic image by applying it with soft light blend mode. Also an interesting blend mode is subtract, which creates a black and white image and by adjusting the A parameter, we can control the black and white effect. Let me set the blend mode back to multiply and reset the A value to 0.5 and try this on a couple of other example images. As you see, the effect works quite well on various types of images. However, keep in mind that this only works well with images which are not saturated. So for example, with stock images which have been optimized already, the effect probably will be too strong. Also, the effect would be too much on portrait images. But depending on the photo, it might work well, especially when you adjust the blend range to lower the effect from the shadows. Keep in mind that everything we did until now was on documents using the lab color mode. If we switch to RGB mode, the procedural texture trick will not work, as we don't have access to the lab color channels. We can however use the curves adjustment in lab mode with color blend mode. I also created a macro which simulates the lab procedural texture mode which is included in the shared macro presets in the description. I'm not going into detail how this macro works as this will be out of the scope of this video but it uses a combination of adjustments and a procedural texture filter 
where the luminance values per color channel are mixed with the color values. The result is, as you see, very similar. It might be slightly less powerful, and optionally, you can add a vibrance layer to the added group to boost it even more. Here are a couple of images for comparison again. Just like with the lab version, it doesn't work well with stock or portrait photos. But all in all, the end results are quite interesting. Here is an image taken with my iPhone in Oxford. I believe with the adjustment enabled, the image is closer to what I remember. The color of the building is closer to reality and it might be that some parts of the image will become oversaturated, but this can be fixed by masking those areas if needed, and if you still find the effect too strong, you can lower the effect from the shadows using blend ranges, or even lower the opacity. Hopefully, you found this method useful and liked this video. Thanks again for watching, and until the next video.